Hey everyone, I uh, hope you are doing well and I had a happy holidays. Uh, I'm still recovering a little bit from a flu, so my voice is a little bit off. Uh, but this is a build I completed about a month ago for Thermaltake CES uh, 2024. Unfortunately, due to certain logistic reasons, this case will not be on display at, this build will not be on display at CES. Um, it will be here <laughs> in my home. Um, but yes, so this case is a new case that's launching um, right after CES. Uh, you, I would have posted this video literally probably two days from now. I'm filming this the night that I'm going to get on a plane and go to CES. Um, but yes, nonetheless, uh, it's pretty much like a dynamic, right? The blue that you see here is called it's a Hydrania blue. Um, it's also going to come in black and white. Uh, the blue, if you like this color, they're going to have a lot of stuff in this color. You guys are going to see that through CES. They got shirts, they got chairs, mouse mats, everything in this color. Um, this color is inspired by a Porsche color. Uh, some of you may have paid attention to, if you're into cars, you know about the Porsche ST, which came out recently. Um, there's somewhat of a color inspiration, even though it's not close. Uh, but once I show you guys the exchangeable front panel, you're going to get a little bit more. Uh, you're going to see this 25 logo a lot um, because it's the 25th anniversary of Thermaltake. I'm booting up the system. And you'll see that they're using this 25, which you're going to start seeing on everything they're going to be posting in the next couple of days. Uh, personally, I don't like the font. Um, I think it's kind of... <laughs> They're trying to go after that Porsche ST look, like I said, but obviously it's not going too well. Uh, but that's my opinion, right? Uh, you may like it, I personally don't like it. The reason I brought this panel out is because this case comes with two panels. You have a glass one shown here, right? And then you have an uh, exchangeable mesh one that you can put in the front if you prefer to have better airflow. Or your layout just requires that, okay? So in the front, you can mount um, a 420, uh, I would not advise it, but it's possible. Uh, it does have a radiator bracket, which is not inside the case because mine's a front piece of glass. Uh, you could mount fans in the front as well. Uh, the side supports up to, uh, this is the 420 I have here, so you can do a 420 there. And the bottom supports up to a 420, which I have a 420 there. Uh, give me one second, I'm going to take off the glass. With the glass off, we can take a look at better the insides. Um, this case has multiple radiator support areas, like I was talking about. You could have a 420 in the bottom, 420 on the rear, 420 on the side if you use the radiator mount. If you use radiator mount on the front, please use the vented panel, don't use the glass panel. And you can mount the radiator on the rear. Um, I personally feel that uh, if you're going with like an FLT, uh, you may want to put that on the side or the rear, and then you could put radiators in the other spots. Um, I had to use the Thermaltake D5 combo. Uh, th this is not something that Thermaltake has. This is something I 3D printed. Uh, their mount is much larger, and if you use it, you may run into issues using this included bracket. This bracket is new. Um, it comes with a case, and it allows you to mount the GPU vertically. Now, you can move this bracket kind of to the left a bit, to the right a bit, you know, just as you need. At its current position, it is at the most rightwards position which means it can be moved more left. Um, as far as this 90 degree riser, ribbon riser, that looks really nice. I don't believe that comes with the case. I'm pretty sure that's gonna be a separate purchase. Um, but it is really nice made riser. It's nice, it's nicely shielded. And obviously you can see that flat, laying flat bend look is very nice. Um, the, elsewise, when it comes to the case, it's, you know, it's like a dynamic. It's a dual chamber case, your power supply is gonna be on the end. And as with all the other CTE designs, you're gonna run your cables through the top and then come out from the side, okay, for your motherboard IO. Um, other than that, like I said, if you mount the GPU in this position, you're gonna to have to run your display port with a 90 degree adapter, preferably through the rear. Um, do that before you put the GPU in, because otherwise you're gonna have a harder time. Uh, if you're air cooling in this case, you know, or even AIO 360 on the side has excellent air airflow. You can't go wrong. Um, but yeah, so the one thing I don't like about this case is I don't like the board support. Uh, it does support EATX, but do not buy an EATX board and put it in this. Uh, it, either A, it will not fit, 
like if it's in a, um, not fit being the 24 pin will not be able to plug in um, for certain boards like the Asus Extreme boards which are a little larger than your standard EATX. If you have something like an Oris Master, uh, you will not be able to use cables that aren't flat ribbon. Uh, you know, like custom cables will not be able to plug in uh, because simply because there is this um, edge here. I don't know how well it's going to come across my point there. There's an edge here, and this edge gets in the way of the 24 pin being seated. Um, all they needed to do was drop it like four more millimeters, and that would have fixed it. Um, but I, I brought it up to their project management team, and uh, let me just zoom in here a little bit more. And they said, oh, we tested with the ATX board. And I said, can you show me a picture of it? And they showed me a picture of it, and it was an MSI Creator EATX from like six years ago. And they used ribbon cables, and it was mashed to the side, which is just, you know, that's a ridiculous argument. Because if it was a motherboard with a 90-degree cable connector, like the Oris's, you know, some of the, yeah, pretty much the Oris boards, and some of the Asus boards. I mean, the Asus boards aren't going to fit, period. Um, but, yeah, you, you wouldn't. That still wouldn't work, even with, you know. And then on top of that, there I have a white panel here. It's completely covered. But if I took out this panel that I have here, you would have this huge gap that is covering. And you, from the front of this build, you could see your power supply. Um, that is a huge oversight because uh, there are no grommets. I don't know if it's because I have a prototype that there are no grommets, but they, I really hope the end product has grommets. Because uh, that, 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 that's really ugly. Because you can literally see all the cables in the back through the front. Um, but from a performance perspective, the case is actually pretty good. So, and it's also very structural steady. It's actually very structurally sound. Because I dropped a, like a 30 pound weight on the edge right here. Uh, which is why my top panel is fucked up. Um, nice. Right, I dropped the sandbag on it. Um, and it didn't dent. You know, stayed together. So... You know, and even without any bars here, so it's actually pretty good. So if you see, we have the glass on; it's giving you a nice, clean edge. Um, as far as this build is concerned, um, I went with the disc roll on the top. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see that on camera. And the B roll, I showed it. Uh, is this disc roll is actually multiple layers. This white layer here that you can't really tell um, kind of helps flatten the top. Because the top of this case is not flat for obvious reasons. You have your mounting points and everything like that. And this, and then the top layer kind of offsets, making it flat. So I didn't have to grind the case down flat, uh, which I just didn't feel like doing. Because then I have to take it apart, sand it, repaint it, rivet it back together. I ended up just, you know, making the necessary adjustments to make it lay flat by offsetting the, like, ridges and stuff into the distro layers okay so my loop border is pretty much you know out to here uh, I think it goes out into I actually forgot my loop border um, but yeah I forgot the loop border guys I built this like a month ago um, but the 2 and 5 are just 3d printed letters I just put a hole through them so I can put the, run the tubes through the 2 and 5 like I said if I didn't mention already is the thermal take 25th anniversary hence the 2 and 5 um, but so yeah, that, that pretty much wraps it up. Uh, I don't want to say too much about the case in terms of all the features and so forth because I, this, I do have a prototype. I'm, I'm going to assume the finalized versions will have some changes, but this seems pretty final to me. I have a filter in the rear, I have a filter on the bottom, you know, and I have a filter on the top. So it seems pretty final. Uh, I'll bet missing grommets. I really think the grommets would probably be on the final version. And I really hope they use gray grommets or white grommets, not black grommets, um, on the white cases with the white interior or the blue version. If you guys want the blue one, um, the, the blue ones will be limited. Uh, I don't know how many, 100 or 200, something like that. So, yeah, uh, if you like the blue, like I said earlier, they're going to have chairs and everything. Um, I, the fluid, I just used the Thermotech die kit uh, on white pastel. To, to match the blue. Um, this block, if you guys haven't seen it, is a Thermaltake block. I painted it white because it only comes in black. Um, and you can see, I, you put display, you could put temperature. So it's a pretty cool block. And it has its own built-in temp sensor. So for water temp. So guys don't need a temp sensor. So it actually works out pretty well. Um, yeah, so that pretty much wraps it up. Um, 
I did this build really quickly, guys. Uh, it's, <laughs> you know, I, I don't know what else to say about it. Uh, it's a very simple loop. Um, I think it took me, I think I banged it out in about three days. Uh, something like that. Um, but yeah, uh, these are the new rads. If I, if I didn't mention that already, these are the new radiators that they have. Um, they have removable sides, so you can take them off, paint them, and put them back on. I didn't paint them, they come white. Uh, I think they also come black. Um, I think 420 and 280 are the ones that got released first. The, the uh, 360 and the 240s will probably come on later date. I don't know about a 480, but yeah, um, I'm using two of them. Um, also, if I didn't mention it already, these are the white Pacific SF fittings. Uh, they're the same as the silver and, and black fittings I used in the other thermal tank build, except for these are obviously like kind of a shiny white. Um, they do have a matte black uh, that looks the same, but it's a very nice matte black. Unfortunately, it's got the TT logos everywhere, uh, which I did give feedback once again, remove the thermal tank logos. There's just too many of them. Um, but yeah, so with that said, thanks for watching.